Come out to King's Mouth, they said. We'll get together and have a few laughs. Well, now they were all dead and he was stuck in the middle of an undead nightmare. This time there was no president to rescue or EMP device to retrieve. This time there was no mission. This time Snake just had to escape from Zombie Island. All the fairies had quit running, but Snake had spotted a small personal boat back before the outbreak began. The only problem is that the lighthouse it was at was clear on the other side of the island. But if you find yourself in hell, the only thing you can do is keep moving forward, and that's exactly what Snake planned on doing. The first item on the agenda was finding some more protective clothing than his bathing suit, and as they no longer needed them, the island's zombified inhabitants were more than happy to donate their garments after a little bit of convincing. Now that he had a more appropriate attire, it was time for Snake to get his hands on a decent weapon, as trying to throw hands with every single zombie he encountered seemed like a pretty good way to get himself killed. Thankfully, there was no shortage of options to choose from, and he would end up settling on a plain old wrench. Although there was nothing flashy about it, it proved to be an effective tool for fending off the undead. Feeling more secure in his ability to defend himself against any external threats, the next move was to acquire some food, as it turns out that bashing in zombie brains can leave you feeling a little peckish, so he broke into a nearby room and fixed himself up a quick snack. With his hunger satiated, Snake decided that the small resort he was currently in was as good a place as any to make his base and wasted little time making himself at home and doing some light redecorating. Of course, he also made sure to take the time to introduce himself to his new neighbors. He even discovered that the car parked outside conveniently still had the key in the ignition, and Snake took this as a sign that the previous owner had wanted someone like him to come along and make use of it. Still, while his first day in hell had proven to be a productive one, he knew this was only the beginning. There was still a lot of work to be done, and he had no intentions of turning this into an extended vacation. So he'd keep pushing onward, although his efforts would occasionally backfire. Still, Snake was nothing if not adaptable, and it's not like this was his first time navigating the abyss. The zombies might have had him outnumbered, and there were admittedly a number of close calls, but he was able to keep his wits about him and stay one step ahead. Plus, one commonly overlooked benefit of the inevitable fall of civilization is that the average cost of living will decrease dramatically for the handful of survivors. I mean, really, the whole scenario is basically a libertarian's wet dream when you think about it. Anyway, right now the plan was to get over to the local police station and load up his newfound duffel bag with as many guns and as much ammo as it could possibly hold. After all, if he wanted to actually get the boat into the water, he'd eventually need to make use of the car he found the other day, and since cars are noisy, it seemed like a good idea to make sure he was well prepared to deal with any unwanted attention it might attract. There were a couple of loiterers hanging around, as was to be expected, but Snake would make quick work of them using his trusty wrench. With the area secured, he then broke into the armory and started snatching up everything that wasn't bolted down. The trip back home wound up being an eventful one as he ran back into that small horde he had fled from earlier, but quick thinking and even quicker feet would allow him to create some separation and escape the encounter unmolested. Compared to the drama of those first two days, the next few would wind up being far less hectic. Snake would take some time to explore the neighborhood and discover that one of the houses was home to an impressive library, which he gladly helped himself to. He would also catch an episode of his favorite home improvement show, replace his wrench with a spiked baseball bat, take a trip to the gas station to fill up a few cans and stock up on some munchies, and even make some delicious stew using toilet water, just like he learned during one of his stints on the inside. Of course, it wasn't exactly the vacation he'd been promised, though, as he did occasionally have to clear out the riffraff, and you know there was the ever-present threat of getting bit and turned into one of those mindless munchers. But despite all that, it was hard to deny that Snake had done quite the admirable job of adapting to his current circumstances, and now that starving to death was no longer an immediate threat, it seemed like a good idea to start making some moves towards getting off the island. So Snake would eventually take his car across the bridge, past the island's main resort, which was absolutely packed full of zombies, and make his way to the island's other police station. A few undead dipshits attempted to offer some resistance, but his new spiked baseball bat would prove to be even more effective at dispatching of the undead than his trusty wrench. The station's armory supplied him with even more ammo in addition to two shotguns, one of which he converted into a sawed-off and quickly put to use, clearing out the lighthouse. Once that's taken care of, it was time to attach the trailer that the boat is on to his car, and after some minor difficulties, Snake finally manages to back up close enough to get the vessel into the water. But there is just one small problem, Snake isn't actually in possession of the keys to the boat and lacks the necessary know-how required to hotwire it. 
He decides to work on his electrical skills first, so he drives back to his base and begins to go around the neighborhood and dismantle every electrical device that he can get his hands on. It takes all day, but he's eventually able to improve his knowledge and get to the next level, so to speak. And with that out of the way, it's time to work on his mechanical skills. Now I'll be honest, I don't know how changing tires and uninstalling and reinstalling car seats would give you the knowledge needed to hotwire a boat, but hey, I'm not going to question it if it works. Honestly, by this point, Snake had cleared out most of the neighborhood and his pantry was fully stocked, so right now the primary concern was just trying to maintain his sanity and finding ways to break up the monotony, although this admittedly becomes less of a priority after his boredom nearly gets him killed. Eventually, though, his perseverance pays off and Snake's able to get his mechanical skills up to snuff, and then he verifies his new abilities when he does indeed hotwire a nearby van. And part of Snake had to admit he hadn't really been expecting to make it this far. When he first set out to track down the boat and get the hell off this island, it had seemed like a fool's errand. It was really just something he could focus on to keep himself sane. He never really thought it was actually an attainable goal. But now everything he wanted was right there within his grasp, ready for the taking. And so he loaded up his car and headed back over to the lighthouse to spend what was hopefully his last night on King's Mouth. The following morning, there's a growing sense of anticipation which Snake can barely contain as he enjoys his breakfast. He fuels the boat up using all three of the gas cans he had brought with him, then starts loading it up with all supplies he had deemed necessary, such as his gun medicine, fishing rod and line, and of course, portable microwave. And then it's finally time for the moment of truth, and Snake promptly tries his hardest to fumble the ball away at the goal line. Yeah, so I guess when you attempt to hotwire a vehicle, you aren't guaranteed to be successful, and after numerous attempts, Snake still hadn't had any luck. His repeated failures had caused him to work up quite an appetite, and when he heads back into the lighthouse kitchen to fix himself up a snack, he ends up finding keys to the boat in one of the counters. Which means that the six days he had spent working on his electrical and mechanical skills had kind of been completely unnecessary, but self-improvement is its own reward, plus you never know when the ability to hotwire a car might come in handy. Anyway, now that he has the keys in his possession, Snake can finally raise anchor and set sail. Well, it's a motorboat, but you get the idea. It had taken nearly two weeks and had been forced to kill over 100 of those undead bastards, but Snake had finally managed to escape Zombie Island. He had no idea what to expect when he made it back to the mainland, but considering he had enough food, guns, and ammunition to supply a small militia, you certainly couldn't accuse the man of being unprepared. And with that, I consider this to be a challenge successfully completed. Hey, what's up, people? Dusty here, and I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, then why don't you leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel to be kept up to date with all my latest content. And if you want to see more stuff like this, then make sure to let me know down in the comments. As always, thanks for watching.